Hi, this is Jesper and I make videos on YouTube for those who like to challenge mindsets and make a difference in the workplace. I like explaining consulting, management and data frameworks and make YouTube videos to explain how to use them. And today I'm going to explain capability mapping, a secret framework hidden on Google search to solve a 50 year old mystery. Computers have been in business for more than 50 years. But when they were introduced 50 years ago, another silo was immediately created. A silo consisted of technology people or technology nodes. So already from the beginning, there started to be a bit of a communication problem with business people and technology people trying to understand each other. And it hasn't got much better, which is quite surprising considering the very, very big leaps and bounds that were made in terms of technology in the last 50 years. But today, business strategy and IT strategy are still misaligned and, quite frankly, dysfunctionally so. The problem is different language and different terminology. A business may use terms like growth, market share, profit, productivity, and a business goal may be to increase productivity if you are a manufacturing company, for example, from 50,000 units per year to 100,000 units per year. A corresponding IT goal or technology goal may be to increase system availability from 99.5 to 99.7%, or to ensure that all calls that are taken on the help desk are answered within 15 seconds instead of 30 seconds. All kind of IT goals tend to revolve around something to do with the service level. This tends to be the essence of many technology strategies today, simply to keep the lights on and making sure the systems are working and available when needed. But there is no significant connection between business and technology goals. And considering the increasing importance of digital and digital technologies, this is concerning. Digital companies, often called digital disruptors, are emerging everywhere. What makes them different is the ability to use technology and how to align business and technology outcomes. Hence, it is critical to incumbent organizations to better align technology and business operations and strategies to remain competitive. And this is where capability mapping comes into the picture. It creates a new view of the organization that both business and technology can understand, and it provides a common language so both can be understood. So if you want to be a hero, Solve the 50 year old mystery and bring capability mapping into your organization, but wonders how? Well, then I've got you covered. And in four simple steps, I'm going to explain and show you how you can become an expert. We're going to talk about what capability mapping is, and we're going to talk about why it's different and why it's so useful, why it's so good. We're going to talk about how it works by unpacking a real case study and actually looking at a real capability map. And lastly, I'm going to share some of my own experiences and practitioner trips so that you can learn as quickly as possible and get up to speed as quickly as possible and go out there and practice. How does that sound? Let's start. And if you like what you've seen so far, please hit the like and subscribe button below so I can make more of these videos. So let's start with capabilities. A capability describes what an organization does at its core. Capability mapping is used to identify capabilities needed for an organization to execute on its strategy and run its operations. It has three core benefits. Firstly, it is easy to use and practice, as you will see in example shortly. Second, it's static, it doesn't change often. So once you have invested the time to develop it, it stays current with very little upkeep. And third, as I mentioned previously, it provides a language that both uh, business and technology can understand. 
there are actually several other benefits. I'm talking about the core benefits when it comes to mapping business and IT strategy, but there are a number of business benefits in their own right that I'm going to touch on throughout this video. So if it is fantastic, why aren't more people using it? Well, that's a million dollar question. It's not that it's hidden. If it's hidden, it's hidden in plain sight. Well, regardless of reason or what other people may or may not be using it, don't let it stop you from using it in your organization to do great things. Let's look at some simple rules behind capability mapping. Firstly, it is not an organizational structure, although, as you will see in a second, it might look like an organizational structure because it looks like a hierarchy, but they are not the same and they answer very different questions. Language is important. A capability is always expressed as a noun, whereas, for example, a process is expressed as a verb. For example, a capability might be product development, whereas a process would be develop product. Another important rule is that capabilities are unique. They are atomic and they cannot be replicated. Regardless of how large the organization is, they can only exist once and once only. It's not like a geographic organization that may have the functional structure and the processes duplicated in three regions. In a capability map, regardless of the organization, a capability can only exist once and once only. Because it focuses on what the organization does rather than how it does it, it remains static and resistant to change. For example, an organizational structure will not affect the capability map. The only thing that affects a capability map is if there is a major shift in our strategy. So how is a capability map developed? These are the core steps, yet depending on purpose, the stages may vary slightly. Let's unpack each stage in more detail before jumping into a case study. First, we map current business capabilities using a structure-like format. High-level capabilities go on top, which are then broken down into more granular capabilities. Second, current capabilities are rated in how well or not they support the organization. This forms the current state view and is often shown as a heat map. Third, to support the strategy, capability uplifts are identified, including new capabilities needed. This forms the future state view and is also often shown as a roadmap. Fourth, capability uplifts and new capabilities are prioritized, which creates a business roadmap. And fifth, the business roadmap is mapped against applications and systems existing and new, which generates an IT roadmap, which forms the basis of an IT strategy. Voila! We have done it. We have made the connection between business strategy and IT strategy. With this background of capability mapping, we can now apply it in the real world. Edison Cars, a pioneer in hydrogen propulsion, builds 50,000 cars annually. The CEO has recently given the leadership team the goal of increasing production to 100,000 cars annually within the next two years. The CEO has also given the leadership team the task of coming up with a transformation plan in three months. The leadership team has decided to use capability mapping and business architecture as a tool and framework for developing the transformation plan. It is well known in the business that the major obstacle to increased production is the lack of IT systems, technology systems, and the integration with the rest of the organization and with the outside ecosystem. The leadership team developed a capability map based on their own terminology they were using in their business and in their industry. And the high level capabilities were product management, build management, marketing management, dealer management, aftermarket management, procurement management, and they bundled all of the corporate functions like finance, IT, and HR into corporate management. Product management were further divided into research management, concept development, design management, estimating management, and pricing management. Product management is often referred to as level zero capability because it's a top level capability, 
whereas the next level capability is referred to as a level one capability. And each level one capability was further decomposed into more granular level two capabilities. And this is our starting capability map for the rest of this case study. Next, the leadership team conducted a current state assessment of all existing capabilities to understand how well they supported the current operations. After understanding the current state capabilities, the leadership team next wanted to understand what capability uplifts and new capabilities were required to double production to 100,000 cars annually. Next, the leadership team prioritized capability uplifts and new capabilities. Once completed, they used the prioritized capabilities to create a business roadmap. And finally, the business roadmap was used to identify new applications, application uplifts, new cloud platforms, and network and infrastructure uplifts to create the connected technology roadmap. The leadership team was very happy with the technology roadmap, but wanted to further leverage the investment in capability mapping. They wanted to understand the organizational impact so change management strategy could be developed. So they mapped each detailed capability against the organization to understand the organizational impact of the transformation roadmap. It also provides a number of other benefits. For example, it identifies inefficient and duplicated processes. It influences organizational restructures by identifying silo and inefficient use of human resources. And lastly, it informs investment decisions by identifying the capabilities that are most needed to affect or to support an organizational strategy. And now I'm going to share practitioner tips and my own experience and observations having practiced capability modeling for many years. And the first one is, if the organization is not familiar with this concept, start small. Start with a function or a group it is not ideal, but it's very difficult to start capability modeling with a big bang approach, unless you have a CEO or someone that is really keen to do it. Find a good use case or a good problem to solve. Nothing is more powerful than using capability mapping to solve a real problem, especially if the problem is something the organization has struggled with in the past. Find a great sponsor. And this is really important. Find someone in the business that can see the benefit of this and need it. So a good sponsor in the right function of the organization is a fantastic start. It's easy to fall into the trap analysis paralysis. Stop at level three or level four capabilities. Going deeper than a level four capability is most often not useful. So stop at level four. So what are your technology choices supporting this? Well, there are not that many. You have two types of software. You have the more cheapest software like your Microsoft Visio, which I tend to use myself, or you have the more expensive software like your iServer that connects the entire enterprise architecture stack, which is horribly expensive and is a very long investment in terms of learning and really coming up to speed. So in terms of software, there's not that much choice. I tend to go on the lighter end using things like Visio. If you want something free, Draw.io is a great little technology tool for this kind of stuff. Overall, my advice is, again, like everything, start small, use simple technologies. And if it takes off in the organization, then you can consider investing into one of these enterprise-grade uh, management software tool sets. And lastly, love frameworks or hate frameworks. There are a number of business capability frameworks out there already that can be very useful to get started. Certainly very useful in the beginning to show the business how it looks like and how it works. But at the same time, adopting a framework early on can make us a little bit blindsided put on blinkers and may not result in the best capability map for the organization. So I do use them sparingly in the beginning, 
to show the business to explain but when I start the capability mapping itself I like to start from a clean slate and one thing that's very important is to try to use the language of the business because they need to own this and be part of this so to use that language is critical but in terms of frameworks what I've done is to list in the description of this video three or four of the industry leading frameworks most of them are free one of them is not but you will all see that in the description so good luck with everything and if you have liked this video please like and subscribe and i look forward to seeing you in my next video take care until then